Welcome back, guys, to the coverage of YCS Prague 2017, number two. It's day two. We are now in the top eight, where 1,027 players started. 256 remained yesterday evening or this morning. It depends on how you look at it. And now, after three more rounds of Swiss and two more rounds in the knockout portion of the tournament, we ended up with just eight players remaining. Those old eight players are Josh Schurzschmidt. We called it in round one. Just so you know, we both called it in round one. We said it's going to be his third victory this week. When he's done in the office, he'll uh, he'll come greet us afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's going up uh, with his spider leg against Patrick Dublin. Maybe we can bring that up for you guys. Let's try that. We can. Thank you. Um, this is in the bottom left corner. Two Germans going up against each other. Then, top right, you see Lorenzo Santoni from Italy with Spiral going up against Rafael Neven, who we featured earlier in the top 32. Um, also Spiral. Um, I'm not sure about Lorenzo, but Rafael wants to go second. Rafael's playing Spiral Reloaded. Exactly. Um, then we got Fabio Zucato, also from Italy, and he's going up against Din Kang Pham who is running for China, playing for China, but actually living in Germany, as far as I'm aware. Good. And the feature match for this round is a bit of a surprise because we're going back to back with Raymond Torres from Germany with his Trickster deck. And he's now going up against Elias Elias Stahlberg, which translates to Steel Mountain. Just a random Steel note. Steel Mountain. Stahlberg. That's amazing. Steel Mountain is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> he is playing Light Swan. German Steel Mountain. Absolutely, yes. And the reason we're going for this feature match, obviously, is because he's playing Light Swan. It is the, the last deck that was formerly known as the other category. Yeah. Everybody else is playing one of the established decks. We see Spiral, we see Trickster. Um, Pendulum is out. Pendulum's gone. I don't yeah. remember what uh, Fabio Zucato was playing. I think it was Trickster? Was Pendulum? It, it was one of those decks. One, one um. of the... Yeah. <laughs> we'll let Luke figure that out. Yeah, Luke is gonna. Luke is on it. All right, guys. Um, we're almost ready to to get this going. We got one more expert opinion about the Trickster deck. Let's hear it from our pros. So Trickster now. Trickster is a very interesting deck, especially because it does something no other deck right now can. The engine is very small. You only play 15, like 15 to 16 engine cards if we count scapegoat. The deck is very consistent, like you have your nine Condinas and your Condinas is a perpetual engine. Once you have one Condina, you can always bounce it back with Licorice, bring it back with Reincarnation. Then also, in my opinion, one of the best cards and very underrated is Lily Bell. Lily Bell is such a scary card because the perpetual burn damage, you don't even notice it. On like the classic searches of like terraforming for resort and a draw, you take 1200 damage. So that wraps up over time and sometime in the mid game, they can always just go for Lily Bell attack you directly, even do like Holy Angel combos and just kill you out of nowhere. So the deck is very good at what it does, obviously. It supports a lot of non-engine cards very well, which at the moment it does the best. So it can prepare you against matchups like Spiral for that reason. That's also why I would say the best matchup of the deck is Spiral. On the other hand, the deck of course has some weaknesses. Like at the moment, the deck has some troubles getting over big monsters, especially like Equipped with last resort, maybe or like bringing it back with um, like if they attack, you bring it, bring something back with rescue. So, but it's manageable. You can still play scapegoats in the deck, which is like a one card link combo with like Ningurizo and Ib, or go into the Borlo Dragon. And the way you can do it, like it's very good because you have your engine, you will have every game. But on top, you have a lot of power cards, which the deck uses quite well. The worst matchup, I would say, is Magicians, because Magician can play in a certain way that they can just like summon a uh, Time Star, get Astrograph, keep floating, so they always have a big monster on field, and you struggle a lot of that, and you sometimes you can't keep up with the pace of the game. But in general, Trickster is a very good choice for this event, because it just we have to beat Spiral. That's the thing. Well, usually you have to beat Spiral. In this case, you have to beat Light Swan. I'm pretty certain that Ray Torres was not exactly expecting that going into the tournament, that he's going to go up against Light Swan. No, absolutely But um, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting. Um, we did look at Ray's deck list for the last feature match, so we're not going to go in depth over it. Is there anything that stands out for Mr. Steel Mountain? Uh, he's playing 60 cards. Okay, that is something that stands out. Uh, he's playing, you know, it's written in German, which is 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, making Pro it easier to read. I proving, agree. Yes, proving difficulty. What is what is this? Um, Ruba flame. Uh, uh, Prada plant. Uh, ah, race. Scorpios. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Scorpios. Yeah, I mean, it looks pretty. Like I don't want to say standard, but like it looks Close standard. To, to like what we saw with JY playing earlier, right? Yeah, very mm. similar to JY's deck. Um, sure and yeah. Way, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, let's let's just see how it plays out on the feature match table. Let's go over there, guys. Yeah, also for whoever's writing the credits, we need to give uh, Lorenzo at least the co-commentator credit when the credits are rolling at the end of this event. Yeah. <laughs> we can see the hands actually um, already, even though they haven't been loading in. I see a scapegoat, for example, on Ray's hand. Yeah, so Trickstar Light Stage, Candina, Lycoris, Trick Trickstar Lycoris, and a Trickstar Reincarnation. All right. It's a pretty solid start for Raymond. Yeah. Um, Elias, is, uh, he didn't show us the hands, but he, of course, showed it to our volunteer. I like how he's hiding his eyes with his hat as well. He <laughs> looks really shady. He's got his hat straight down. <laughs> and yeah. like, Let's go down to business. Yeah, the judges were like, we have to check them. They actually did a deck check. This is, uh, this is one of the reasons why we did actually have a larger break. I, I was just promising you guys at the end of the last feature match, yeah, we're going to be right back. I totally forgot we have, of course, a written coverage. You can check out the written coverage on our website. There's a link below on Twitch, also below on YouTube in the description. You can just head over there, find um, interesting articles, deck features as well. If, if we feature somebody who ended up not going to the top 8 or top 16 and so on, um, chances are his deck list is already be online in that article, so you can uh, take a look at that and come up with some ideas of your own. And um, of course, interviews of players and various stuff like that in the written coverage. Okay, so we're going to see a double like restart and double reincarnation uh, for Raymond. Yeah, that's actually pretty and close to game. It's crazy. It's, it's similar to what we saw in the in the last um, game of the last uh, match. Generally, that grass looks greener. Yeah, I think he should do it right now. He should just trigger both the reincarnations because that's a lot of damage. Yeah, I mean, if he knew what Elias was holding, he would immediately go for that because mm. you always want to get rid of that yeah. that grass. Oh, let's see, most damage he's going to get if he does decide to use it, or does he wait for a search? But oh, if he does he decide, he just thumbs up. He just said go. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. He, I would he just this is his opening, and then he said go. Do you slam down that grass looks greener? Oh no, he's going to set his cards. Because First, he's afraid of the combo. You can respond to that. Yeah. But he could have just set, um, which he did, that grass looks greener. It's interesting. There we go. Because I, I think you do double reincarnation here just to banish the cards. You actually shrink your opponent's deck size yeah. as well. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I yeah, yeah, because then you take 10 cards out of the game. Um, Banisher. So then they're only actually sending like ten cards away, right? Yeah. Maybe yeah. just a few more because of your well, plus surgery. plus one because he drew one more than uh, than Ray. Yeah. So uh, that's nine. I think that's just nine then. Yeah, I guess you could chain uh, Cosmic Cyclone from your hand to take out the trick state, uh, the light stage to reduce your damage and the number of cards you're going to lose. Yeah, yeah he is very good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or he might go. After the blind one, which could be scapegoat, which would be pretty big for him. He gets a scapegoat. He gets the scapegoat. Nice snipe. Good news for Elias Stahlberg, who, well, on this, at the same time, it's kind of bad news, to be honest. But yeah. um, he's going to take he's going to take a small hit. But uh, at the it same could time, have been so much worse. Yeah. Yeah. He's now going to have a pretty clear run uh, after his grass has resolved, and four cards in hand to play with. So. And and why did he not go for the reincarnation right away? I don't know why. I, I would I think absolutely it do it. He was maybe trying to get uh, wait for a search card and then uh, flip it so he could then uh, catch, his, catch his opponent out uh, with a card that he needed in their hand. But Any, not anyone who's played this matchup immediately sets anything in their hand. Yeah, they just go, okay, if I get this out of my hand so the reincarnation doesn't clean me out, and then I'll start playing. Because then if I even get draw, hit my draw on Lockbird, I get to keep the cards I've set first. Yeah. So maybe maybe he should have thrown that trick star reincarnation I straight away. One hundred percent think he should have. Okay. Let's be let's write it down. <laughs> For our post match interview, because this time we might actually get one. Uh depends how fast we're moving, because we might just uh, go all the way through. Yeah, that's true. 
So yeah, reincarnation not being activated right away. And yeah. in the end, that, that proved to be at least two more cards that Elias is going to end up in his graveyard with be because of that. Because yeah. he could just... Uh, yeah, and... That, does he know the matchup? I wonder if he's banished Garnet. Uh, I actually don't know if he's banished Garnet, uh, but he should know the matchup for Trickstar. There's no way you, you've made it this far without playing some Trickstar this no. round. In fact, we can even see... No, no, I, I don't mean that part. I mean, oh. does Ray know that he's playing against Lightsworn? Uh, he should be making the assumption that there are uh, fairy tale. There's He's key things like cards. Snow is going to be in there. It's going to be fairy tale snow. Okay. Knows. Yeah. So and yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Dot deck. I'm asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just tried to fight it with the with the energy drink. And uh, when your opponent's decks like how did that go? Of yours. <laughs> um, it's it's still in development, <laughs> in, in development hell, so to speak. Oh dear. We will know at the end of the round. Okay, so there's a double happy. reincarnation uh, can get back the Trickstar monsters uh, if they get cleaned up. Yeah, still Elias goes down to 2,000 life points. Mm -hmm. That's not a lot. <laughs> that is not a lot. Maybe he can he can push through here. We, we, yesterday, oh no, in London we saw a triple wolf, right? We he, did he, see triple wolf. He could so. not he could not quite keep the pace. One wolf is banished. Is he he's playing three, right? Uh, yeah, he's surprised if he wasn't. No, two. Okay. He's playing two. two. Yeah, that's what I was aiming at. No, was the brilliant fusion's being activated, so that means the Garnet is still safely tucked away in the deck. That's impressive. That is very impressive. Oh, it's the third card from the bottom. Oh, that's that's where exactly you where be. you want it to be, yeah. if, if not the very last card in your deck. Yeah. Well, but nothing shady was going on here. We can know that for a fact because they just got deck checked. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. the, uh, you even saw that drawing the Garnet is double bad because then you just get OTK'd by... Um, Trickstar is running its Lily Bell and Lycra into you repeatedly. Yeah. <laughs> Garnet was just awful in that situation. So this is going to be interesting. Like, on the one hand, Lightsworn has a perfect setup to do all the shenanigans that they like to do. On the other hand, Elias is down to just 2,000 life points. Who is going to be faster here? Is it going to be a burn victory for uh, Trickstar or is it going to be Lightsworn just like one gigantic sweep it's and dealing 8,000. It's going to be very hard to win the game this turn with the two Trickstar reincarnations in the graveyard because you've got yeah. to go through two monsters, 8,000 life points, plus two monsters coming back from the reincarnation. I don't yeah. believe the reincarnation effect is even once per turn, is it, in uh, the graveyard? No, I don't think so. I know it can be used at the same time. None of it's once per turn. Yep. Y you can banish it from your graveyard, then target one Trickstar in your graveyard, special summon it. Yeah, so he's got to get through four monsters and 8,000 life points, which is probably not going to happen. No. But... Okay, if that happens, then how does Ray deal enough damage? Uh, well, that's got the that's question. He doesn't have to deal a lot of damage. He's got Candina in hand. Yeah, how much is that? Well, he can just go get another reincarnation and then do it that way. Because he's going to be able to get double Lycoris back off the of reincarnation. It's going to be much harder to do stuff like that because uh, the fairy tale snow in the graveyard, you can just revive it, banishing all the cards in your hand. So That's you don't true. get take damage from the reincarnation. That is very. It's true. actually why Fairy Tale Snow was deceptively strong against Chainburn, because yeah. you could just banish all the cards that they were going to deal damage with you for, and then just yeah. keep hitting them with the 1850. You start to draw cards though, as in like for your turn, and that that was like 800 damage when he was doing that. So yeah, so maybe the question remains: like, how does Ray get the last few points of damage, and even if he goes on and survives this turn? Which which seems to be like almost guaranteed at this point, thanks to those two reincarnations. But how does he come back? How does he f uh, deal that extra two thousand points of damage? He, with just, he just has to draw like uh, an extra Lycoris or something like that, and suddenly it's fine. Let's have a look. Uh, eight or millions. Um, okay. We <laughs> uh, go Lycoris. Lily Bell. Lily Bell. You can actually do a Lily Bell combo. Uh, he goes Candina. Lily Bell. Uh, no, Lily Bell attacks Snow. L oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's, that's uh, the snow, thing. Snow is that's the way. We keep getting going back to Snow. Okay, let's, we we're just going to find out. Okay, so it's not going to be one gigantic sweep, at least so no. far. It doesn't look like it. Uh, with Elias uh, dealing with the field that Ray has, now he's bringing back Snow, banishing all the spells from his graveyard and, um, and Ash Blossom. Yeah, and also the Cypher and Omega is... Not that Very likely though. to jump out of the game with the Candina. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Minerva could be made in main phase two with the Wolf. 
Uh, so additional cards could be sent to the graveyard. And but is it is it actually smart to uh, play Snow right away, or would you wait for? It? He has he's, a second one. He's right? got a second one, but okay. he can leave that one in the graveyard. Then make Minerva load up the graveyard, detaching the Snow. So then he mm. has two Snows in his okay, turn. Okay. Okay. Whilst having the Cypher and Omega take out the Candina that uh, Raymond would want to use. Right. Mm. Yeah, and then Raymond has to do draw one card that answers the field, which is going to be probably most likely a... Uh, he's playing near the snow for damage. Okay, yeah, so he's just going to... Oh, that's rough. Okay. No, that's fine, because if he still goes up to a um, Minerva, he gets to put like three cards in the graveyard. If Minerva gets removed, that's another four cards in yeah. the graveyard. He does have a Minerva. Just, just double-checking, because there yeah. were times when people had problems yeah. getting their hands on that card. Oh, it's been reprinted now. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. Super like, like I said, yeah. there, there were times. Yeah. Um, so do you agree with the second snow as well? It's aggressive. Um, I, I don't think it was necessary because I think he was going to win over to two turns anyway. Mm -hmm. So he hasn't actually made his um, turn clock any faster mm -hmm. by doing this, but he has reduced his graveyard resources. But a card like Minerva is so powerful, there's the opportunity to a heroic challenger. Uh, like okay, he maybe he's not going to go for uh, Minerva. It doesn't look like it right now. Uh, he's got the Bujinte, Bujinte Amaterasu. He could play if that's what the that's the only uh, three monster. Yeah, Amaterasu is there. Ah, interesting. This one has two different effects depending on whose turn it is, right? Uh, three different effects. Three different effects. Okay, let's uh, see if we can get this one up when. Uh it's going to pop up here very, very soon. Um, I'm certain of it. <laughs> oh, he's, is he reconsidering? Or? No, no, it's... No, it's I think the judges picked it up. Oh, oh sorry, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, I just blinked, and then I looked back, and then it wasn't there. Yeah, here it is. So, I can bring that up for you guys as well. So, you can only control one of this. Once per turn, during either, either player's turn, oh, two. you can Sorry. detach one, <laughs> apply this effect, depending on whose turn it is. Your turn. Target one of your banished level four or lower monster special summon that target. Your okay. opponent's turn, probably more relevant. Target one of your banished level four or lower monsters, add that target to your hand. It was two. I thought it was three level effects. four or lower monsters? No, three effects. Level okay, four. so he can add back his hand traps. Level four or lower, right? Level four or lower during yeah. his opponent's turn. Uh, special summon it. <coughs> no, during the opponent's turn, it adds it back to your back, hand. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in yeah. his turn, you can target one of the banished level four lower monster special summon. Yeah, so if he wants to do that during his opponent's like standby or something. Is that better than Minerva? I'm not sure. Yeah, um, I'm, not <laughs> I'm not quite sold. I think <laughs> Snow is better. It wasn't, it wasn't that Minerva was good, it was that Snow is better. Is well, it the thing is, he's still got a Snow in the graveyard. The question is, does he just have the resources to... Uh, I mean, we can count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards in his graveyard, including the snow. So add back Ash Blossom. But he can only add oh, back in his opponent's turn. This is not a once per turn effect, is it? Oh, yeah, once per turn. Once per turn, yeah. yeah it I think it now is. Uh, it's, it's now Raymond's turn. Okay, it looked like he had to touch two materials from the Amateur oh, oh, sorry. Is it uh, Ray's turn? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so w the the first effect was used to summon back the yep. Raiden, and uh -huh. then the second effect the second effect was used to in the opponent's turn. Yep, Ray to get so Ash. Rage is true. Okay, so what what did Ray draw? He's got a, the Candina still. He's the second Candina. What it did he? It must be. Uh, I, that's from the information we can see. Yeah. So it's the second Candina. Which okay. is going to be Ashed. Or not. To Ash or not to Ash. That is the question. So, favorite, my, one of my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh plays. Uh, Ghost Ogre. I'm really confused as to why, um, why In Elias Ra Raymond didn't um, summon back Lycoris with the like double reincarnation chaining to um, the adding back of Ghost Ogre, because then he could have inflicted damage from it. He could have inflicted 800 mm. damage from that. Oh, and then Lilybell direct attack. Yeah. But direct mm. attack still. Keep in mind snow. One snow is life. Yeah. 
That's true. That's okay. And then, but, and then he just pa passes. I don't know, yeah, he's got to get at least one attack in. Yeah. If he passes, then his opponent can't add cards to their hand. It's it's not quite enough yet, unless Ray knows something we don't know. Yeah. Which um, I still feel that double reincarnation would have been good. You yeah, know, I mean, getting some burn in sounds yeah. like a good plan. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't see anything that. that yeah, if he got to keep his Candina, then he could have gone up to uh, Topological Bomber Dragon, uh, which yeah. wouldn't have been able to be flipped face down. Uh, so his opponent would have been forced to use the snow preemptively to stop that, and then you'd have had options to go maybe into Deco Talk or something like that. Okay. But yeah, maybe he knows something. We don't know. Yeah, let's let's, let's see. Ray Torres didn't just sneak into the top eight. <laughs> no. He he crushed into the top eight. A bit of a train wreck the past past round. Okay. So he's got Lilibet Licorice. Two good cards. And the light switch. But let's keep in mind there's still a snow. And that snow is gonna make an appearance. It's kind of weird, like we, we talked about options like banishing cards from your hand for snow so you don't take more damage from a reincarnation, for yeah. example. All of those plays are completely out of the window. Like Elias just went all in, head first. Yeah. Um, I mean, so far, so good. He's, he's in there. What, uh, what are the stats on uh, the Bujinki? Uh, 2600 attack. I don't remember its defense. 25. 25. 26, 25. Uh, what's... Uh Ilias' um, match history, like, from last season. Last season, let's have a look. Yeah, we I mean, did, we did Raymond's, didn't we, already? Um, yeah, we talked about it, I think. Uh, yeah, I actually, it was embarrassing for me, because I predicted that he had done before, well before, and then last season, for some reason, he did not. <laughs> okay, uh, in case you're wondering... 70% win ratio. That's How really many good. Over eight tournaments. Uh, big ones or? Yeah, big ones. Uh, oh, okay. All, all all Nationals, Liverpool, Prague, Rimini, Bochum. Wow. Okay, that's a very experienced player then. So we're going to get 800. Then the reincarnation can bring back a uh, like rescue. So it's going to force the snow. Yeah. yeah. We, we do have that sometimes. We we have a couple of players flying under the radar. Yeah. Like they, they always miss out on the top cut just by like one uh, win or one loss. Yeah, I actually thought I recognized Elias's name. He was in the top cut of YCS Prague last year. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was 15. That's so. easy to say now, by the way. Just, yeah, no, just I, to try to take away some credit from you. <laughs> <laughs> Says you guys who are telling uh, what's, what's his name, who you recognize. Mm, I have no idea. Mm. I have no idea what you're talking about, Luke. Yep, exactly. Stop right there. I'm, I'm with Matt. Uh, just in case you're wondering, his, his match history for this tournament, he started going out... Uh, first round was against Collins Amikame, who you might remember because that is the player who lost to Jay Quincy uh, with the Battle Fader in yes. YCS Prague number two. two. Uh, that yeah, was the two. second YCS Prague. And then the second round... Uh, he wins the first round. Second round, he drew with Ingvar Hjartason, who is from Iceland, who we featured yesterday, and who's playing Burning Abyss. Uh, then he was a couple of victories over Francesco Tiraforti and Maximilian Kautz. Then he lost against Giorgio Quintavalle, also from Italy. Um, and then it was a couple more wins, obviously. These guys, they didn't end up in the top eight without winning. Um, against players like Omar Mahmoud from the UK, Leonard oh no. Max. <laughs> he was my locals. <laughs> uh, David Jenik. Uh, Alberto Marazzi, also from Italy. Lots of Italians he had to go up. Then he lost to Lorenzo Santoni in round 11. That was the last round prior to the top cut. So two losses. And he did actually kick out Christopher Nielsen, the only undefeated player in the tournament. Again, the curse of Anubis. Striking. Was that actually during the top, top 32? 32. That was in the top 32, of course. <laughs> yeah. So the same, uh, same story as always. The History repeats itself. The only player to ever stop that was Marcello Barberi. Yeah. <laughs> was it really the only player who ever stopped that? Yeah. I just feel like it happens frequently. No. No, 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 no. no, 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 no only no, Marcello. No. Don't be ridiculous, Matt. Respect the curse of Anubis. Speaking of respect, Elias Stahlberg is demanding some respect here. He did manage to put Ray in a tough position where he could not deal enough damage, even though he was just down to 2,000. And that secures him the first door here, even though 
There was some place where we weren't 100% sure about. A yeah. large start from Raymond, ton of damage coming in, but just uh, not quite having enough to finish the job. And that grass looks greener, getting resolved, because uh, Raymond held the trigger on his turn one reincarnation. Yeah. Uh, and that ultimately came back to punish him. So, yeah. I, I'm not sure if he knew what he was going up against. You also have to keep in mind he was playing forever in the last round. Um, it was the last match with us in the interview. So, uh, sorry, we did we did skip the interview. So just immediately after that last round, he had to go to Rudy, who was uh, typing up the um, the top written eight top eight. Yeah, thank you so much. And so not much time to rest in between, and then he's being sat down right away in the feature match area again. And he was super surprised, like what again? And so. If th all of this being in play, it's not that unlikely that he actually forgot. Oh yeah, I saw Elias earlier in this tournament. He's playing lights for. Yeah, that's um, unlikely though. I wonder what you guys think. Uh, should should you pull the trigger immediately, or is the reasoning of waiting your, for your opponent to uh, search for something and then pulling the trigger? I mean, I get that search argument, but at the same time, if he has a card that allows him to search in his hand, why not get rid of that card? So so you know, if your argument is. Oh, he, he wants to search his deck for something. Yes, but if he, he's being forced to, to get rid of that card in his hand, he cannot well, search his deck. So yeah, you're either using those reincarnations as disruption or damage in that situation. And if you're committed to damage, pull the trigger immediately. Yeah, I, exactly. If yes. you're I, I committing to disruption, uh, probably should have waited longer. Yeah, but well, Actually, no, he did the best, didn't he? Because he flipped him up in response to his opponent's grass. Looks yes. greener. Uh, so that he could uh, reduce the deck size by 10 to reduce the impact. But I suppose the argument could have been made that if he does just flip them up for damage and his opponent goes left arm offering, uh, he has absolutely no way to stop. Uh, yeah, but then the deck size is smaller anyway. He's accomplished the same once thing. Once again, we are the last match with quite oh. some time remaining. So we're not going to have much time at the end of this round. We're How just do we keep doing this? It's like, whose fault is this? It's, it's not a problem. Um, we're just having a good time. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> OK, I like that. I like that approach. Right, so, so who's going to be a favorite going into that second game? I mean, Ray definitely wants to go first. Um, I think uh, Elias, probably due to the lack of likely playtesting against him. Agreed. Plus, his pre-match, his last season performance was very strong. It was on par yeah. with uh, World's competitors almost, right? Yeah, yeah 70%. It's a very respectable Very amount. high. Yeah, yeah. He, he's absolutely climbing that mountain to become... YCS champion maybe this weekend. I just realized a statistic that I didn't work out, which would be interesting, is how many players we have that are over certain thresholds, like over right. 70, over 80, over 60, yeah. over 50. Yeah, it would be interesting to know, like, that puts you into the top 20% of all duelists. I bet so. you could code that before the next round started if you wanted to. I could, yes. That's yeah, but then we would lose him as a commentator. This is true. No, no, I, I could do it, but not, not starting now. I will do it after this match. Okay can do it with one hand. Then you write the entire software in like uh, 30 minutes or something when you just want to see if you could do it. Yes, I, I wrote the first version in, in about half an hour. And he goes, Matt, does this look good? And I'm like, yeah, I can't understand a word that's on the screen. He goes, oh, hold on, I can make it look pretty. Yeah, so I made it, uh, it just used some pretty printing. And right, right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Ray goes first, um, as I predicted. Gets <laughs> trolled. Yeah. And John Lockbird, double <coughs> pot of desires, not ideal, but uh, there is a left arm offering. Uh, in hand, so we'll see if Raymond actually has. He doesn't have the Ash Blossom. No. And oh, he's got Clashing Souls in the deck, though. So we might see that go off this game. Yeah, we may. It could be interesting. Do you just desire? Like, do you just play left arm offering here? If just do it. I don't know. If you pot desires, you are massively reducing the impact of left arm offering. Um, Set one pot of desires. Set. Uh, well, they don't want to give up. Do you want to give up your normal? Yeah, you're going to give up your normal summon. You can have. No, you may not want to give up your normal summon, so you have to pot desires. Then you could uh, left arm offering. Yeah, I think that's too risky to be honest. With knowing the format, like you're 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 gambling on your opponent not having something that's extremely common. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is good. This is good. Goblinburg into Snow. Mm -hmm. Snow is going to get its effect. Goblinburg does nothing to negate its yep. effect. This prevents uh, anything like tricks like Honest being used here. Yeah, slowly but surely becoming safer here. That's like, you know, a, the mon mon face up Lycoris is much scarier than a face down Lycoris. I agree. Yeah. 
It's a face down monster. Don't don't get no effects. Yeah, it doesn't have a flip effect for some reason. So desires. Uh, after that goes free, you've got to be pretty sure your opponent's not holding the ash back. Yeah, absolutely. But you have massively lowered the impact of your grass. Look, uh, looks greener already. I think that's still okay. It's still 10 cards. Uh, that's still pretty good. Yeah, I, I, th I don't think he's going for that game plan here. Like, no, I think he's so. like, okay, we have to play this differently. Ooh, Gold Sarko. Gold Sarko and Matsuki. Um, he does have the Shiranui, right? As additional yeah. targets for Gold Sarko. Soul Hunter? Soul Hunter. That's what it looks like, but I don't think that's its name. Yeah. Sol I think that's meant to say Solitaire. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing Ran Yui Solitaire is a card. It is a card. Uh, yeah, but this handwriting is not fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to see likely Minerva. I, I think so anyway. I don't know what else you would Tornado possibly Dragon do. is another potential option. Maybe Tornado Dragon. That's p a possibility, yeah. Because then it answers Light Stage and a back row. Uh, but you can get your Fairy Tail Snow live if you use Minerva. Yep, Tornado Dragon is going to be the choice. Yep. And that's fair. In a way. Most fair likely choice. not going to have to worry about artifacts in this situation. Um, no, but let's be honest. If, you, if you're if you up one and you just lost nice. and lose to an artifact sanctum, that would be super oh, sad. Scapegoat. Good news for Ray, bad news for Elias. He's still got his battle phase, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He does. So... Uh, He's still got the chance of clearing out these scapegoat tokens. Likely not with an Azura Priest, even though that would be optimal. <laughs> I wonder if he just goes left arm offering and goes for it's it. Like here. throwback Sunday. Yeah, I think you just. <laughs> I, I think I would just left arm offering here. Like the Pot of Desires went through. Okay, yeah, maybe Sarko first. Yes, yeah, so well, Sarko no, first to clear out the back row. Do you need to banish like three cards to play left arm offering? Uh, I, I need, need to check the text. I can't remember how many. Left arm offering. If you have two or more cards in your oh, hand, two or more. Yeah. Okay. Banish your entire hand. And then add one spell card from the Yeah, I think he's he's gonna banish Spirit Master with Gold Sarko, then pop the back row. Uh, it's gotta be face up card. With oh, is it? Okay, uh, then so one of the goat. one of those goats is perfectly fine. Just pew pew, meh, done. That was oddly graphic. Yeah. <laughs> is graphic the right word when you can only hear nope. it? No. Nope. Okay, it's very. Uh, I was I was thinking audacious? about that. Is that the word? Probably. Audacious is not. The word. It is a word. It it is is a word, a but it's word. not the correct <laughs> word. No, answers on a postcard. Uh, volume, voluminous? I'm not sure. I'm sure the Twitch chat will tell us. Okay. Anyway, we did not see that. Light stage is a possible. Well, light stage is going to get countered by Tornado Dragon. Uh, raided, draw into a Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. And um, this is not looking great for him. At least as far as I'm aware to tell. I think if we see the left arm offering come out here, then we constantly see these these uh, decks that have been um, handicapped in one way or another. I mean, he does have the three scapegoat tokens, so he's probably going to check his options here. Yeah, well, any uh, any other monster can then go up to all the way up to Borload if he needs to, um, or a huge range of extra deck monsters. And there's no interaction from uh, except for the Tornado Dragon, as we discussed earlier. <coughs> There's no other hand traps to interact with the rest of this turn in Elias' hand. Mm -hmm. But Ray doesn't know that. But he's probably going to find out because he's going to attempt to do whatever he can. And he's going to see if there's something coming down to stop him. Oh, he does have disruption. He has the fairy tale snow. Yeah, but not in his hand. But yes. snow has. Uh, he's it's got. It's a grave trap. Three, four, <laughs> five cards in his graveyard. So snow would be very costly at this point in time. Yeah. yeah. Not impossible to use, obviously, but I don't think you want to give up two cards in your hand. Uh, among them, a Mitsuki. Yeah, especially with you got left arm offering yeah. potential next I mean, turn. He's probably gonna want want to hold on to that pot of desires. Um. So he would have to give up. Uh, well actually, it's not even working because he would have to give up the entire hand. He's got five cards, including snow, in his graveyard. Yeah, that might change if the Exceed monster gets taken out. Yeah, Brace thinking about this, or is the has the Charge picked up the graveyard or something? Uh, no, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, he needs to make a play if it. Ah, on th him. there's been a, a, a duplicate slow play warning. 
Ah, okay, so they're looking at what happens next. Yep, they're looking for <coughs> a right. possible upgrade. Was it uh, in last round that he uh, got a, a slow play warning as well? Uh, don't, don't know. Yeah, I, can, I, can I think something like that was, uh, was being mentioned. So when, I mean, I don't want to get like too analytical, but when did the slow play happen? Uh, well, I, I, to be honest, yeah, he was taking quite some time after the, that Tornado Dragon. Mm -hmm. Um, especially the options are pretty limited for what he can do. He's, he's got a lot to do with those tokens, but yeah, that's that's where I would see that. Okay. It's, yeah. it's, it's never, the thing is, the way that slow play works is that it's not, um, it never really should, you should never really take into account the complexity of the game state because you have been playing the deck for however many rounds you made that choice to play that deck. If you don't understand how to play it in a timely fashion, then that's y on you. Yeah. So So now now they keep going. Uh, I would guess that he received another warning. Yeah. Sometimes the the head charge can um, can decide that. Yeah. If it's malicious then it's a different penalty starts, altogether. Starts getting yeah. upgraded. Well, I, I think if it happens again it's definitely going to get upgraded. Yeah. <coughs> um so he needs to Yeah. <laughs> he needs to play fast. Or at least in a, in a timely fashion, as we like to say. In a timely fashion. Yeah. Uh, it's Lake Spider. He gains 500 attack points. Thanks for being an Earth Monster. Monster. Yeah. Find the King Ryo. Finally. <sighs> finally we see him. That actually blanks the left arm offering in uh, Elias's hand. But I think he's just going to go uh, Pot of Desires next turn. I can't imagine that we see the left arm offering. Oh, he's going to banish his own uh, Tornado Dragon. He's wow, and uh, every card from his hand except for Pot of Desires. Yeah. Like I said, very costly. Yeah, he doesn't want to see Borrow Load or something like that. It's, um, super interesting. This is, I think this is the most expensive fairy tale Snow I've ever seen. Yeah, absolutely. A at least in that stage of a game. I mean, if, if it's like two seconds before timeout or something. I, I might have seen something like that before, but, yeah. but that's like the only thing I could come up with. And that's that's even hypothetical. So like, I, oh yeah, I remember that back then. All right, so two cards in hand for Elias Stahlberg. It's going to be three inches a second after he activated that Pot of Desires. Uh, do we know what he drew? Not yet. It's a monster. It's a monster, okay, yeah. Ghost Ogre. Ah, not very, uh, not very aggressive card. Not a great place when you're this far behind. Yes. But Desires is pretty good, especially in a 60-card deck, but you don't really mind how much you lose. So two Gammas and the Garnet's Garnet, yeah. gone. Two Actually, copies of Brilliant Fusion in was, hand. I think that was Epsilon. That is Brilliant Fusion. Jesus. Ugh. And Solemn oh Morning. Oh, oh my oh, God. Right even. That is That's terrible. Oh, All of man. How many Garnets does he play, Luke? Just one. Not a good place to be. No, 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 not at all. Um, yeah, the hand trap is being reduced to a face down monster. And uh, the Thunder King did not get answered, so it just becomes the same problem it was last turn. Yeah, so, so this this match could be over. It could be Ray Torres tying the game. It's got a reincarnation. All of a sudden, those Thunder King Riders are getting extremely hard to find online. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Three attacks. And uh, Ray Torres firmly sitting in the driver's seat in this match. He can now step on the gas pedal. And um, there's not much that Elias can do with the cards on his field. At the moment, that's a solemn strike and a brilliant fusion. And like we said, the brilliant fusion is basically a dead card. Man yeah. predicted it after he had seen the target for it. Yeah. The only... Such a sadist. It's because, it's because yeah. it always happens. Like, uh, oh, pot desires. Draw two more pot desires. Okay. Play two pot desires. Fine. That, that doesn't always like happen. I've seen that once. Yeah. Okay. Statistically, it should should only happen every now and again. But <laughs> once see, in a lifetime. I think it's like one point. Whenever it matters, chance. it always happens. <laughs> it's like a 1.3% chance. All right. Oh, did you did you just... No, it's it's true. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. And then with two pot of desires. In a, in a sexy card deck. Huh? In a 60 card deck? Ah, in 60 cards, that's even, le e even less. Yeah. All right. In 40 cards, if Bottle of Desires is the first card you play, I think it's, I mean, it's, it's like less than 3% chance. Let's right, put it right. That way. All right. So it's not looking good for Elias Stahlberg. He 
That's a strong strike. strike. Yep. I was just I was just about to say before we started going on about the uh, desires. If he if he consolidates his resources into something and it gets striked, that will be somewhat redeeming. Is that scapegoat? I think that was Chart of the Light Brigade. Oh, okay. <gasps> That's so <laughs> bad. Thunder King Ryo is back. <laughs> it actually was. That's so bad. Oh, the gold sarcophagus is going to resolve. This is. Uh, I can can he? I don't think can he add it to us. Yeah, I don't think it does that to his Because hand. of the Thunder King Rai? Yeah. Um, isn't it just from the deck to hand? Yeah, Neither so player so can add cards from their deck to ah, hand. Yeah, so so the except the except by drawing them. So the Gold Sarcophagus would work. Yeah, I know old cards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just in case there's any confusion. I, I like vaguely remember almost all of the cards, but I don't always remember what they do. Yeah. Or like all the cards that I played. When okay, I so, so this duel should be over, or am I missing something? Mm. No, no, it's looking pretty tight. Tingran Yui, uh, Spirit Master. What does he do? He's not got much going for him apart from when he gets banished. When, he, when it's normal someone, you can special summon one Shiranui monster from your hand or graveyard. I don't and think he, he has any in his graveyard. One. And I draw on Lockbird. Except it? itself, but banish it when it leaves the field. If this card is banished, you can target one face up card your opponent controls, destroy it. So it's like the searchable destruction. Has he got enough to play snow again? Three, four, five, six. Um, no. Yes, he does. Eight cards in the graveyard. Oh, really? One oh, okay. card in hand. I'm not sure how he got back to eight cards. At least that's what the app says. Yeah, the, the, the apps aren't necessarily right. For yeah, the okay. I don't think they up, uh, updated the app. Like no, we, for game? we tell our judges not to. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Take too it, much time. Yeah, exactly. Don't don't bother too much. From so that's King it. One one for Ray Torres against Elias Stahlberg. Oh. This thriller is going to a game three. We haven't seen Thunder King in so long. And he um, was so good. Yeah. Back in the day, there was actually a time where. This card just was seeing no play whatsoever, and I kept looking at it going, I wonder why, it's just so strong. Yeah. Um, but of course it was more important to combo back then than it was to actually stop a combo. So, so here we can see if we look very, very closely, we have a second monitor where we can see a little bit more um, of the hands of the players. Um, Elias is uh, thinking about his options here. Yeah. I, uh, I just I reincarnations seem to be coming out of the deck. Ido Marcus is just feeling a little bit warm about the whole situation with Thunder King. I just, I know it. <laughs> He's going to just be like watching at home, just like, hmm, Thunder King. Yeah, don't don't touch that card, please. Dear, dear person who is who is in charge of the limited and forbidden list. It's not just one person, it's a team. Okay. There's a discussion. An ongoing discussion. It's a constantly evolving discussion. <laughs> uh, you guys come up with... Uh, more and more ways to enjoy the game. <laughs> I couldn't have put it any better. All right. So Ray Torres starts shuffling. Um, Elias is just uh, thinking about his options a little bit longer, exchanging one more card. And I think he's done as well. Just counting his deck again if it's still 60 cards. Just, just think, just think about this. Like the amount of energy that he must, he must have to like expunge more than all the other players in the room shuffling a sixty-card deck versus <laughs> forty. That must take its toll. Yeah, he's at least got more. Like we get, he's burning so many but more calories, he can at least one more burger in the evening. It's not like, it's not like he's yeah. doing like weights. It's just twenty extra cards. Yeah, he's got to carry it as well around what? with him. Yeah, don't don't underestimate yeah. the burden. Yeah. The the burden of twenty the burden additional of the Yu -Gi -Oh burden cards. of the mighty twenty extra cards. Exactly. But the steel mountain, I am sure. He can climb will, that, yeah. Will carry on. So we got s roughly seven more minutes remaining in the feature match. It is the last match in the top eight. Yeah, we're gonna be moving right. Do we on have to the, the top results from the yeah. other we parts of the bracket yet? We don't. Um, mm -hmm. but we can spoil you guys a little bit. We're gonna go into the other side of the bracket. That means the winner of the match between Lorenzo Santoni and Rafael Nevin. It's going to be in our next feature match. And he's going to go up against the winner of the match between Fabio Zucato and Din Kang Farm. All right, Ray's always doing the same thing. He's putting his deck upside down, drawing into his opening hand, turns them all around one by one, and then he turns his deck around. So for Raymond, we have Ash Blossom. Interesting habit. Regeki, Tricks of Reincarnation. I think it's... Pot of Desires, I'm not entirely sure. And it is Pot of Desires. 
Yep, Han start loading in. And Trickstar Candina. Wow. That grass looks greener. Side frame gamma. That's all I needed to see. Going first. Black grass looks Bam, greener. Ash, gamma, game. That is actually Ah, just I've got the ash, man. That totally sucks for Finish. you. Really, I've got the gamma. Oh, you have the gamma. Well, that's uh, really unfortunate for me, isn't it? it? That's just what happened up in the little redaction cam. It is, yeah. Um, we, we wow. <laughs> we could do voiceover for those two players, and it wouldn't be fun for Ray. That is insane. Fool, you activated my hand trap. You oh. are the fool. <laughs> you activated my hand trap. And uh, oh they're still God. brilliant. There we go. I think the yeah, audience yeah, just yeah. caught up with what uh, what happened there. Oh, you you might, might, yet. might hear some background noise. Um, that is why. Th they just saw what happened there. Um, there's, of course, a Raigeki in Ray's hand. So even even if Elias manages to, to put the together a great field. The absurd oh, amount of use you wow. get from Fairy Tale Snow is... Oh, my God. Insane here. And also, he's got access to the driver and the gamma during his own turn. So that's a tuner. That's Cypher Omega. That's Omega, yeah. It just takes a card away from him. So an Raymond card. is going to be playing on just uh, three cards next turn. Um, potentially losing his pot of desires. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is really, really good for Elias. I didn't get and to see... I think that's an understatement. Yeah, our judges are going crazy right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god, I've never seen this before. Yeah. Yeah, Omega. And it's Paul Desires. Oh. I'm <laughs> not sure that how oh. it works with the die, but uh, he's randomly choosing which card in his opponent's yeah, hand. He, kind of one, two, three, four. Oh, it was a one. It was a one. Yeah, right? five or six roll okay, again, please. Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay, I thought it was a five for some reason. All right, there's one fairy tale snow in the graveyard. There's Shinran Yui Solitaire. I think that's just got banished. Oh no, it's Mizuki, and then we're gonna see uh, Uni Zombie. I guess that's why players have now gone back to the Lights One deck because you can just gamma the Ash Blossom and just force it through. Yeah. Uh, even more so than uh, baiting your opponent, just uh, I, you actually have a reliable act. But gamma's existed for a long time. It, it has, and yeah. it's been plaguing it's players for a very long time. It's just never been as important as it was now against. How Spiral, Spiral has caused everyone else to evolve. Yeah. yeah. Gamma has been around for such a long time, and this is the first time we're seeing it being played. Man, that opening with yeah, that, with was that gamma. That was perfect. That's it. That was insane. Uh, with these two, you could make another Cyframe Omega and take another card away from your opponent, should you so choose. Whilst putting uh, Mizuki in the graveyard, which can then get back the uh, Uni Zombie. He's playing three Omegas. And then you go Fairy Tail Snow, and you could, you could Omega three times this turn. Oh. Like, if there's an option to do this, I would not be surprised. Yeah, I think he will. If, if he's aware of that. I think he will take that option. So, uh, starting with Wind Up Shark and uh, Wind Up Magician. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we see where we are in a few, uh, few minutes. <laughs> yeah. Water combo. Any of you needs to take a break? That will be the best possible time. Oof, and Elias is like running through that turn. Yeah, and yeah. He's, he's probably done this a thousand times yeah. sat in his room. Like Did he banish the solitaire? I imagine he'd leave the solitaire. Oh, no, no, he is banishing the solitaire. Uh, I wondered if he'd leave it in his graveyard, so if he used the second activation of snow, he has additional removal options, so he can flip your monster face down and remove a card. Yeah. Yeah, solitaire gets back the spirit master. Yep. Which is the extra monster needed to? Oh, so yeah, he's gonna have it in the graveyard to do that. Yeah, go into Omega. Tricky, very tricky. <laughs> hey, you know what? As a trick star player, losing your entire hand, <laughs> you kind of—it's it's kind of like you can't ironic. even feel bad about it, can you? It's like, oh, you've been drawn Lockbird <laughs> combo. That's pretty nice. Let me show you my version of that. It's only fair. <laughs> that is pretty ironic. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I know that probably the Twitch chat right now uh, is going mad, going, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got yours. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's actually the turnaround is fair play. Um, it's a good point. Um, he, he need, does he need to hit that Raigeki? I mean, Raigeki doesn't no. really do oh, that much. Because three Omega. Cyframe Omegas are banished temporarily, yeah. and they're going to just come back. And yeah. That's, that's uh, lethal damage all on its own. 
Man, that poor Ray Torres. Yeah. Oh, that's a high strong gamma. Okay, no, we're not going to see a third gamma. We're going to see a Ouroboros, maybe. Or no, it's uh, our Bujin friend. Yeah, Amaterasu. Yeah, that's the other tuner that he needs. <laughs> yeah, but now he's got a monster in his extra deck, so. I'm sure he can uh, turn it into something. Now we're going to learn that. Yeah. Okay, they have uh, been called. Yeah, extra time. Not that surprising, but at the moment. Oh, <laughs> of course. Wolf. That is savage. Who let the dogs out? Elias. Yeah. And it was a singular. Oof. That's so rough for Ray. It's, I mean, Shiranoi Solitaire has the correct name because that is a game of Solitaire right now. Yeah. There, there's only one player playing. Elias Stahlberg here is just slaying people. Absolutely, yeah. This is what he's been doing all day. The executioner. <laughs> yeah, he's got yeah his and he's going to use uh, Feratel Snow to take out his extra yeah, monster zone. <sighs> kind of wow. smart. Pretty smart. This is just phenomenal. Yeah, and so the as, final as Omega. we can see, w with like the Does way... Does he play Ouroboros as well? Um, I, I don't can't see, it. see it. I don't it. think so. No. No, nope. it's also Ouroboros in German, just in case oh, okay. you're wondering. Because I, I was wondering if you can then go up <laughs> to Omega, 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 Ouroboros, start. Yeah. Man. Wow, Raymond Torres has to play with two cards. That's like the worst. Interestingly enough, it says Ray Torres has won two duels. Oh, uh, he hadn't used his normal summon at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Ah. Oh. It's like adding insult to injury. What's the level of Sinanui Solitaire? It is level Ball. four. Ah, uh, Babuska. <laughs> Sure. Jesus. Sure, buddy. Yeah, it's a, a good game. Wow. Yep, I'm not doing Whoa. anything to that. Wow. Whoa. Oh. Okay. Time for the post match celebration. <laughs> what a flawless execution from Elias Stahlberg. Yeah. We just saw him absolutely wiping the floor with Ray Torres. I feel sorry for Ray uh, Torres. Gamma, gamma Graphic Screener is probably the best possible hand he could yeah. have hoped for. It was absolutely savage. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, it's the hope that gets broken with that combo because, because you slam grass down, your opponent's like, yeah, yeah, yeah ash. And he's just like, gamma? And it, bro? It, it feels kind of all right because it happened to a Trickstar player. Like, oh, still. I, still, I still feel bad for him. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I don't feel bad for him. I'm just saying, like, it's poetic justice, actually. Yeah, it's just soul crushing. He did, uh, he did in our last feature match get the draw and lockbird combo off. Uh, this time so he got yeah. this time, triple yeah. Omega. He's, yeah. he's got two, um, like, moments on the stream with us. He, one was going f in his favor, the other was going against him. So. If good you run just, for him, though. If you just, yeah, absolutely. If you just yeah, tuned yeah, in, very, um, much time. <laughs> very good run from Ray Torres. Uh, he ended up in the top eight, going up against Elias Stahlberg uh, with Lights won the only other deck, formerly known as Other, uh, in our tournament this weekend. It's Lights won, like in relative numbers, going up and up and up. This might be the culmination of it because now it's up on 25% of the field. And um, Lights won in the first game, we saw Ray starting. He did have double reincarnation. Yep. Um. Downstairs, like face down. And he could just activate them straight away. And our question was, why should you not? Yeah. Like, if you want to go for burn, just immediately, straight away, activate reincarnation twice. Yeah. He did not do that. Um, grass was grass is screen. Grass is green is resolved. He could have been holding it back uh, to make sure that his opponent can never activate left arm offering, playing the odds that he's more likely to have left arm offering instead of uh, that grass looks greener. But at the end, he did have that grass of screener and then just runs him over. Yeah. Yep. So that, that was the, the first game. Even though like, Ray did a lot of damage and um, Elias was just down with 2,000 life points, uh, there was nothing that Ray could really follow it up with because um, Elias was building his field and then assembling a combo. And yeah, you, you know how it goes. You've seen Yu Gi Oh! Yeah. Um, the second game was kind of clear cut, to be honest. I, don't even, I didn't even take a note. There was nothing that was super standing out for me. No. We didn't see like a great combo. We didn't see like an, an infinite play or something like that. It was just like both players had a lot of lockdown cards. Both um, were basically hindering the opponent from unleashing their game plan. Yeah. And then if, if that happens and you give Trickster enough time, 
They're just going to burn through your life points, yeah. also burn through your resources, and in the end, that was enough for Ray Torres. And then, just now, game three, absolute execution from Elias Stahlberg. Best possible opening. Yeah, you can't ask for anything better at that point, because uh, even left-arm offering wouldn't have let him do that, because he'd had to banish his own gamma. Yeah, yeah. Grasslux Arena plus gamma after equals, Ash Blossom. Equals top four. <laughs> yeah. Equals top four, yeah. Let's, let's Ash just plus gamma equals top four. All right. We have been the only match in the top eight for quite a while. I think like 20 minutes ago they told us yes. this. So I'm 100% certain. I promise you guys, we're going to be right back with our semi-finals. We don't have a player interview because we need to get going with this tournament. So in just a few minutes, we're going to be back with the top four of YCS Prague. <laughs> 